on the next episode of Love, Life, and Liquor. Why don't you start? Why don't you, why don't you go ahead? What do you say in the beginning? It doesn't matter. Just say what you want to say. Hey, world. It's... <laughs> I don't remember what you say in the beginning. Oh my goodness. You're, you're listening to Love, Life and Liquor, a drinking partners podcast. If you like beer, food, sex and talking about badass kids, then this is the podcast you've been f-ing waiting for. Now, here are your peoples, Marisha and Dom. Hey, welcome to another episode of Drinking Partners. It's myself, Dom. And Marisha. Okay, so... We have, I don't know if this is necessarily a special episode, but um, in the midst of us, you know, coming up with, you know, show ideas and things of that nature, we realized we had an episode already tucked in the cut. Yes. I feel like this is a a milk toast episode. Like on Good Times, she was trying to pull together the breakfast or the meal. That was milk toast. Remember, on, we talked about this, the milk toast they had on Good Times. It's milk toast. (laughs) Okay. Anyway, so what we have going on today, you had brought this this topic up and I was like, okay, take it away. Okay. So what I have been noticing, I feel like basically all around me on TV, in real life, is how, I'll just speak for America because Mm -hmm. that's where we live. Um, It seems that people are super fearful or not embracing aging. Okay. And I say that because I keep seeing all these posts and stuff on social media. I keep hearing all these conversations. I keep seeing things on TV where people don't want to admit their age. Mm -hmm. It's like when you get to 30, like you might as well just die because your life is over. (laughs) And we're all trying to look like we're forever 21. Mm. And that's just, that's not the case. Like we are not going to get younger. Like that is a fact. So... Why do we just value this youthfulness so much and discredit aging and like don't have anything to do with it? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's and true. I mean, if you look at from the time that we get, you know, we start to get older, you know, 18 is a milestone. 21 is a milestone. And then those are kind of like the only years, not 18, 21, but the ages 20 to 30 are the only years that people consider important. Right. You know, because those are, I guess, those those are the development years. You know, uh, you're going through college, you get out, you get your first job. But then after that, yeah, you're right. I, I do see it on social. You turn social- 30 and then you die. And it's like, you're going to die. Like, everybody's <laughs> like, oh, I got to hurry up. I got to get I gotta get married. I got to have my kids before I turn 30. And you're like, damn, only 10 years. Those specific 10 years out of your whole life, those are considered the most important decade. Right. And God willing, let's say... Let's say we say birth through 30 Mm -hmm. are like the prime years. Yeah. Hopefully you're going to, the bulk of your life will not be those prime years. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like, why are we just discounting this? And we're trying to go back to that and we will never go back to that. And I get it. Like being young is fun and like your body feels good and stuff. But I'm like, even at 30, like people now are like, Oh, I'm 30. My knees hurt. My back hurt. You're like lying. when I was 30, I did not feel like that. <laughs> You're lying. I don't, I don't remember that, but I will say, and this is real life. When I turned 40, <laughs> I remember there was things that were hurting. I was like, what, what is this? Like, why do my ankles hurt? So I feel like we're <laughs> a little different and maybe it's just to make myself feel better, but the things that we did for the last 20 years were not necessarily good for your body. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we might have aged our bodies a little bit doing certain that. things. But for the most part, I'm like, I still feel good. Yeah. Like, had I not done those things, then I probably would be feeling a lot better than I feel right now physically. Like, my feet hurt or my ankles hurt or whatever, you know, thing that I jacked up. It is my opinion because... People like, oh, this hurts, that hurts, or whatever. Like, I need a nap before I go out, which I do need a nap before I go out. But I also wake up a lot earlier Mm -hmm. than I used to when I was younger. Because when I was in my 20s, I was single. I didn't have any kids. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to get up at a certain time. True. Besides to go to work. But now, I have to get up at 6, 6.30 every single day of my life. But I think a lot of this is because, like you said, you see it on social media. Come on, man. A lot of of folks are... They putting off for the gram. They putting off for Facebook. You know what I mean? Just so they can get comments from from other individuals, you know, right. some validation. Like, oh, girl, I, you know, I I agree with you too. I'm 29, and I, and I feel like my back hurt. 
I don't know if you're going to link the things that I sent or whatever, but you know, I've been doing some reading and stuff and it's like, we put these unnecessary time constraints on our lives. Like I have to do this by this time. Yeah. I have to do this by that time. And it's like, why? Why do you have to have all your kids? You want to have seven kids and you have to do it all before you're 30. Like, why? Like, what's going to happen at 31? Or like, I have to have this kind of job by the time I'm 30. I have to be married Mm -hmm. by this time. And I get it. Like, if you want to have kids, if you're a woman and you want to have kids, or even if you're a man and you want to have kids, like, you want to be able to enjoy them and, like, do things with them and stuff. But I'm like, I don't think... 30 is like if you don't do it by then and it's just like oh well yeah but like don't do it at all those may just be markers and and milestones because like you said especially when it comes to having children like you want to be around right you know what i'm saying like i i was i was lucky enough to have you know parents that were young as hell you know to the point where you know my father and i served in the military at the at the same time we were on active duty together for 11 years (laughs) for 11 years together and many times they thought we were we were brothers. You know, growing up, I was able to play basketball with them. We played football. We did like we did all of that. I don't know if they necessarily enjoyed being young parents. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it is definitely different now because we're older parents. You know what I'm saying? You know, having you know children that are three and six at, at our age, like we're probably better off at this age than my parents were at that time when they had me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is great. But at the same time. I don't think my ass is going to be out in the street playing, playing football, you know, with Destin in, in my fifties. I mean, I may, I mean, that's I just something like that we have to young, see. Though. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> well, we're not old, but I feel like because we do have younger kids, uh-huh. like we're still going to be doing some things that people who are a little bit younger than us mm-hmm. are still doing. Like when I go to the daycare or I would go to the school Yeah. <laughs> and all the moms are like 10 years younger than me. That's wild, right? Yeah. I'm like, Oh, like, <laughs> But I don't know it until they say something like mm-hmm. we were talking about, like, oh, I don't know, like Backstreet Boys. I'm like, oh, yeah, I used to listen to them in elementary school. I'm like, OK. Yes. Yeah, I always have the moment. You'd be like, damn. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like until then, like, there's Nobody really no knows. difference. Yeah. So we're just all having the same experience. And that's why it's just frustrating me so much that people are like, oh, my gosh, like when you get 40. Yeah. But like when I, you get 40, you get 40. Like, that's but, at the, it. but at the same time, you don't know what you don't know. Right. I feel like more parents, more people are starting to become parents at older age. Mm-hmm. Like when I was telling you, one of the former chiefs, she had, I want to say she had her first child when she was like 43. You know, back in the day, that probably wasn't a thing. But, you know, now due to, I can't even say medical technology, I, I, I think maybe we just didn't, we didn't know. People are like living longer. You know, people are eating better. People are taking care of themselves, things of that nature. So they're able to have, you know, children at later ages. I don't know if Janet Jackson actually had that baby, but she had a baby at 50, right? Right. I'm starting to think it's a bunch of propaganda. (laughs) For real. (laughs) Like medical community propaganda? Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's possible. That's just my thoughts. I am not a medical professional. Right. Or really a professional of any kind. But, like, I'm just from people that I know... And stuff, people who are having babies naturally older, like yeah. in their mid to late thirties, and the babies are healthy, the mothers are healthy. Like, what's the problem? Mm-hmm. I feel like maybe they're just trying to scare us into having kids earlier. Maybe they just didn't know. I don't know how much research has been done, Probably. you know, since then. Probably a lot. But I actually read somewhere, like for women, your egg production, like the quality and the quantity of your eggs, actually drops off starting at twenty six. Mm. So this thirty five number. Yeah. I'm not sure necessarily where that comes from because I was a mother of advanced maternal age right. with Olive and And she's fine. Yeah. So far she seems she yeah. seems fine. Hello, Dr. Igor C. Butts here. If you're pregnant and over the age of 35, you may have heard the term geriatric pregnancy. Nowadays, doctors use the term advanced maternal age or AMA. Today, more babies than ever are being born to people in this age category. According to a 2014 report from the CDC, the number of people who gave birth to their first babies between the ages of 35 and 39 has risen. First births in this age group were six times more common than they were in the 1970s, and those having their first babies, even in their 40s, is as much as four times higher than it used to be. According to the same report, yes, there are risks that include premature birth, preeclampsia, and gestational diabetes, but having a baby later in life isn't all about bad news. 
According to the CDC, older parents typically have more resources to care for their children, such as higher income, more education, snacks, and shit like that. So growing old in America, expectations versus reality. There was a survey conducted and they asked roughly 3,000 people. The Tell who the survey was by. It's not random. This is legit Pew, Pew Research Organization, right? Pew Research. And these were the things that they said marked individuals as old. So 79% of the people that were surveyed say that turning 85 is old. You'd agree with that, right? Yeah. 85 is, you're, you're pretty much on, on, the, on the downward slope. You know, <laughs> me. Let's see. Can't drive a car. Sixty-six percent. They say that you're they're old. Frequently forgets familiar names. I do that shit every day. That is, <laughs> I swear I can't I can't remember people. I'd be like, uh, I'm like, you know what? That that dude. Fifty-one percent that frequently forgets familiar names. That is a marker of being old. Bladder control problems. Forty-two percent is no longer sexually active. 33% retires from work, <laughs> 23%. But I think the military is different from the civilian workforce because typically retirement is what, like 65 or something mm -hmm. like that. Whereas military after 20 years, so if you join right after high school, that puts you at around 38 to where you retire. But folks typically go out and get another job. So I don't, I don't consider that really. But even civilians are retiring younger because people realize, and I don't want to do whatever do this, this for the rest job of my life. is that I don't really love for the rest of my life. Facts. So why don't I retire at 40 and then do whatever I want to do for the rest of my time here on earth? But that kind of takes you back to what we were talking about. Those, those prime 10 years, maybe, maybe folks are looking at like, those are the go get them years. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm going to dedicate myself for this, you know, the 20 to 30 to get as much loot as I can get established as much as I can. So I don't have to spend the rest of my life working like the previous generation. Nobody wants to work to 65. Nobody wants to see their parents work to 65. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if I can bust my ass and make this life happen for me and my people, then I'm better off. I don't know if they necessarily look at it like that, but I can I can see from a from a hustler's perspective, I don't want to do this shit for the rest of my life. So I can just go ahead and bang this stuff out. Then boom. I can see that. That's <laughs> destined if y'all can hear that. Uh, <laughs> I could see that, but I just don't know if people are really thinking that when they're thinking of Being old. aging. And yeah. yeah. But we have two more. Uh, has grandchildren. We obviously don't have any of those yet. And has gray hair. 13% of folks surveyed say that if you have gray hair, that means that you are old, which means I am old as hell. <laughs> I mean, even that's not true anymore. Like, obviously, older people have gray hair. Mm -hmm. Young people have gray hair too. I know people in their 20s who have gray hair. I'm just, I think my thing is why this topic just really burning my grits because I don't want to be regretting or not regretting, but just looking back on a small portion of my life, missing the life that's happening now and going forward. Hmm. Because I feel like my 20s were fun, but I was also like a remember. hot mess. I don't remember my 20s, <laughs> like for real. I was a hot mess back then. I didn't have any money. And then... I had like a little quarter life crisis because I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not married. Like, what am I going to do in my life? I don't know what mm -hmm. to do. And then I got over that. And then my 30s, like I enjoy my 30s. I got married in my 30s. I have my kids in my 30s. Yeah. So I feel like life has just, for me, improved as I've gotten older. Right. And I feel like it's just getting richer. Yeah. I mean, I know everybody, most people probably are maybe afraid of dying and may probably equate getting Yikes. older with like, I'm that much closer to dying. Is that where mortality starts kicking in when, when you turn 40? <laughs> I don't know if it's 40, but I'm just saying, I think that's what the root of this whole forever 21 yeah. thing is. Like, I don't want to die. I mean, it's, it's messed up though, because like when I was telling you not too long ago that I had a, you know, a couple homeboys or whatever from high school and it's, and they were only 42, 42, three of them within the last, I want to say two, maybe three months died. You know what I mean? 42 is, I look at that as relatively young. You, you should not be having, you know, the type of issues that, that they were having. I mean, obviously that takes us into a whole nother space and topic in terms of, 
you know, taking care of yourself and, and making sure that you, you know, go to the doctor to get regular checkups and things of that nature. But yeah, like, you know, these folks were dying from, from heart failure and, you know, things of that nature. So I don't want to say that had me thinking more about it, but at the same time, I didn't think that folks were going to start, you know, dropping like that. And then when you think about it, I'm sure those people or their families would have loved to see them be 45 or yeah. like I have a lot of classmates who have passed away before we were 40. I'm like, it's a, a gift to, to be 40. Like my mom didn't make it to 40. Like I said, I had a lot of classmates who didn't make it to 40. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, everybody doesn't get to be old. And I hope one day I will be like legit old, like can't drive, can't hold my pee. I don't remember. I don't know about name. that. I don't, well, I want to hold my pee. But like those things that. that they were saying, being old, like I hope I get there. I mm -hmm. hope when I'm 85 that I don't have those things. But I think that survey just kind of showing like you're only old as you feel. Like it's a state of mind. Some things are going to happen. Like your body's just going to get older. It's not meant to last forever. Right. But I think if we take care of ourselves, we can get a lot more use out of it. True. Are you smart as fuck? Let's find out. Researchers from the National Center for Health Statistics looked at death rates in 2019 for each state and the District of Columbia. For the U.S. overall, life expectancy was 78.8 years in 2019. What state had the highest life expectancy? A. Hawaii B. North Dakota or C. New Jersey If you answered A, then you're correct. Hawaiians had the highest life expectancy at birth in 2019, living to nearly 81 years old. The Aloha State also led the U.S. in highest life expectancy for women at 83.9 years. The bottom five states were all in the South and included West Virginia, Alabama, Kentucky, and Tennessee. West Virginia had the lowest life expectancy for women at 77.3 years. Some of the, the reading I've done is kind of saying that technology, social media, all that stuff is kind of fostering this obsession with being young for, so. forever because so as the great, <laughs> this is a good person to quote. So this is from a psychology today article, mm -hmm. but in it, um, they quoted Hannibal Lecter in the silence of the lambs when he was talking to Clarice mm -hmm. and he said, we begin by coveting what we see every day. Hmm. And so they use that quote because that's what we see on TV, on social media every day, young, yeah. young, young. I think there is, there are some movements who are trying to show different things. Like you see Duh, mm -hmm. um, doing like the natural beauty and yeah. like accepting all types of body shapes and sizes and things like that. There's, there are a few actresses and actors who are like, like, I'm not going to get plastic surgery. I'm not going to get all these things done to my face. Um, who are into aging gracefully so that we can see that stuff more. But mm -hmm. I think on the whole, what we see is just youth and even older people trying to stay looking young. Or even acting young. There's nothing wrong with adopting some things that younger folks do, you know, like, you know, social media. I don't know how many older folks actually have social media. I'm starting to see more. But when you're actually trying to engage in in a lot of the activities that young folks do, I don't like I don't want to sound like a fogey or whatever, because I'm not even really that old to begin with. But you start seeing old folks trying to do like all this young stuff and they look real silly, you know, with all the the ticking of the ticking of the talking. <laughs> I, I myself, I don't have TikTok. I you know, I don't think I have the you know the patience, you know, for all of that. And I thought about that. I don't even think that is getting older. Like you're old, like I'm incapable of learning how to do TikTok and whatever like that. Like I do like TikTok because I like looking at the, I don't know, just random things that I get to see, but like mostly food and hair and stuff like that. So I do enjoy it, but it's not like what drives me. We took the kids to see the Nutcracker and I took Olive to the bathroom and I saw this little girl in the bathroom dancing, doing like a TikTok thing. I'm like, why? <laughs> Why are they doing TikToks like everywhere? Like I see kids doing it in the store. I see them doing it in the bathroom, just everywhere randomly in the airport. And I'm like, why? But you do you know? see a lot of folks, a lot of older folks, do you think they're adopting this type of stuff because it makes them, it makes them feel young and, and connected to this new generation? Yeah, maybe because I do think there's something to be said for continuing to learn, like learnability. Yeah. Um, Cause you said something the other day when we were talking about, it, it just seems like the generation previous to ours, once they hit a certain point, 
don't know how to do anything anymore in, right. in regards to technology. You know, how, how you turn this TV on? You know, how do you, you know, work the internet? You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's that type of things. Whereas this generation now, like they're so tech savvy, it's, it's absolutely, you know, ridiculous. And I think we kind of got the best of both worlds to where we kind of grew up in it. Mm -hmm. um, but now our, you know, our parents, you know, grandparents, whatever, like now they're trying to play catch up. Yeah, but so much has changed in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. I would say probably faster than things have ever changed yeah. before. Because if you look at our lifetime, when we were born, people were listening to 8-tracks. And we went from 8-tracks to records, cassette tapes, CDs, Blu-rays. MP3s. What The yeah. Laserdisc, MP3s, yeah. now streaming. All that has happened within the last 40-ish years. So that's a lot. I think it's a lot to learn. And previous generations probably did not have that learning curve. And then like our kids, it's just going to be normal for them for things right. to change like that quickly. But I do think as you get older, you do have a choice to make. Like, am I going to stay with the times and continue to learn? Or I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and get my kids to turn on the fire stick and whatever. But I don't think that's necessarily a, a case of being old. I think it might be a little bit of fatigue. Mm. Like me, I'm like, I do not want another account. Like you said, it's it's the learning curve is, is out of control. And um, technology has just pretty much changed the way people communicate. Yeah. So I have a family member. We're 14 years apart. Mm. I pay all my bills and stuff online. I don't know why. I don't really like to go to the mailbox. I don't really like to open mail. So I don't want to mail bills. I do everything online. I just have it come out automatically. Or I can do it on my phone. But this family member, they are the total opposite. And I'm like, why don't you just pay that bill on your phone? Just do it by horse. But <laughs> but they don't trust the... <laughs> they keep all their money in a shoebox. No. They have a bank account, but they prefer to, like, write checks and stuff. And they don't want, like, these... They're writing checks for real? Yeah. Businesses to have, like, access to their... Oh, man. You know, bank account and stuff. They like to write out the bills and put them in the mail. Or, you know, take it to the, the water company. I remember in Charleston, I had to take the bill to the water company. I'm like, why? But whatever. So I think it's just a comfortability thing also. Like there's a lot of good things about technology, but there's also a lot of downfalls. Like we've both gotten our social security numbers like out there just yeah. lost on a computer that some organization had everybody's information on. And mm -hmm. they're like, oh, sorry, like your information has been compromised. Here's this free Get this coffee <laughs> credit mug. karma that you can have for three years or whatever to make sure. I feel like that's just kind of, inevitable unfortunately nowadays mm -hmm. because of technology the way things work but i think a lot of people are fearful of that kind of thing and so we're just kind of at the generation like i'm just willing to accept the risk like it's gonna happen yeah at some point even if it's no fault of your own so i'm like i might as well just use the internet to pay bills and apps and stuff like that visit the doctor online are you smart as fuck? let's find out According to Pew Research, in 2000, 14% of those ages 65 and older were internet users. What percentage of old heads now use the internet today? A, 46%, B, 25%, or C, 73%? If you answered A, then you're wrong. The correct answer is C. The 2019 study found that 73% of Americans ages 60 and older spend more than half of their daily leisure time, just over four hours, on their TVs, computers, tablets, or other electronic devices. Well, in regards to aging, one of the articles that you had sent me talks about the fact that in 2011, Americans spent 10.4 billion on cosmetic surgery. Annually, over 1.2 billion is spent on liposuction, 800 million on hair transplants, and 11 billion on vitamins and supplements. All of that stuff in uh, in an attempt to look, you know, younger. Um, I mean, there's nothing wrong, obviously, with taking care of yourself, but yeah, nobody nobody wants to get old. Old is just not a thing anybody wants to do and it just made me think of when we were watching i don't even know why i'm admitting this when we were sitting there watching <laughs> that sex in the city reboot then it's cold man because like i don't know how old dude was supposed to be in the show they're all supposed to be like mid 50s like dude died on the first episode I'm, oh he's a little bit older like he was riding his little peloton bike handling business and then he gets off the bike and dies i'm like shit 
like I know they were supposed to be older, but that's some sobering thoughts about getting older. Like this is that what's going to happen? It's going to die on his bike. He had an underlying heart condition. They showed that in season six. But yeah, I mean, I guess that is part of, I don't know. I'm like, is that a part of getting older or is that a part of... I mean, something's going to happen regardless. But we see people who are older and like yeah. healthy as a horse. <laughs> However healthy that is. And then people who you watch soul food and Big Mama had to get her leg <laughs> amputated. <laughs> You can't bring up Big Mama because I'm just saying Big Mama had diabetes, like right. But my point is, I think part some parts of getting older is like the aggregation or accumulation of bad habits, like catching yeah. up to us. Got it. That makes sense. And not just well, you're old and that's it. Like this just happens when you get old. Because I I don't believe like some things just happen because you get old. Mm -hmm. I think things catch up to us that we did in our 20s and 30s and 40s and whatever. Like if we ate like trash our whole life and now we have diabetes, it's like, well, are you really surprised? Obviously, that's not the case for everybody. But I think a lot of things are when you're young, you feel invincible and you think you're always going to feel this way. You're always mm -hmm. going to be healthy and your body can take a lot more when it's younger and fresher. And True. But you have to take care of it a little bit more as it gets a little bit older. If you use that that trash gas in your car, like eventually you're going to have that little buildup and everything. Mm. You're gonna have to, you know what I'm saying? So if yeah. you use the good stuff the whole time. But then that's probably why young folks act the way they do then. Because these are all examples of why I don't want to get older. You know what I'm saying? When they start cutting off Big Mama's leg because she was eating, you know, <laughs> she was eating yams and, you know, smothered pork chops and shit every Sunday. I mean, that's that's what that's what happens. But it doesn't have to be that way. I mean, you, you're right. But I'm just I'm just saying those those are just examples where they're like, damn, let me go ahead and live this life for 10 years <laughs> before I die. And, you know, and everything I mean, everything with pork in it and don't take my leg. <laughs> but did oh you eat healthfully goodness. when you were younger? Hell no, I didn't. Were you thinking like, I you know what? Not I need to work out because I need to pass this P test, PT test. And it was like. I need to work out because, you know, my cardiovascular health and like all oh. like that. Like nobody was thinking like that. <laughs> no, I definitely was not. Cause I remember, you know, when I was like 15 or, you know, 16, whatever I was, I was easily eating a whole extra large pizza by myself. You know what I mean? I was like 10, 12 pizzas in the pieces or whatever. And I would kill it. And then now like we went over my mama's house for Christmas and she cooked like 50 Cornish hens. <laughs> and I was like, why why did you cook all this she's like i didn't know how many you were gonna eat i was like i don't eat like that anymore like i'm not 15 i'm not i'm not gonna eat all these little birds <laughs> they won and some potatoes and called it a day but yeah there's no way i'd be able to eat like that now and and it not do something you know what i mean like now you know i, I just eat a piece of bread and it's like bloop 10, 10 pounds <laughs> like it's absolutely ridiculous and metabolism is is not the same as you know when i was in you know my teens and or 20s but you know, I know that. And that's why we got that. We have two exercise bikes in the in the garage that we don't use. Good times. You know, I stare at it hoping that, you know, if I think hard enough, maybe the pounds drop off. But I didn't want that murder bike. I told you I didn't want that bike. Yeah, but I, I want it because in my head, I'm like, I'm going to hop on this bitch every morning and I'm going to make it happen. And I'm going to get a two pack. So tomorrow morning, I am going to wake you up. Well, no, after you drop off Olive, then you come back. Uh. And you don't even have to drop her off tomorrow because I'm going to Pilates. I'll drop her off and you can get on the murder bike. Mm. Well, I thank you. So I'll wake you up and make sure that. I'll probably still be in the bed when you when you get back from, <laughs> from Pilates. I'll be watching Sports Center. That's how that goes. Ah, well, all right. Now that you heard the episode, do you still feel the same about this young versus old thing. I do. I still feel the same. I feel like we've kind of made this fake construct of what old and young is, where the mm -hmm. line starts and where it stops. So mm -hmm. it's whatever you want it to be, I feel. So forever young. Yes. There it is. And speaking of which, we discussed how TikTok is just dumb as hell. But this is the first time that she's seeing this. <laughs> oh, he made us a TikTok account. <laughs> we got a TikTok account and you can find the Drinking Partners at Drinking Partners on tiktok so follow us on tiktok follow us on ig make sure you check us out on um, spotify anchor wherever you find your podcast 
and then yeah we're gonna see how this how this work out i i don't know how to, how to tick tock but we we sure about to find out oh geez it's gonna be a ride <laughs> so on that note peace we out right thanks for tuning in to love life and liquor make sure to like subscribe and follow on all platforms and be sure to tell them about us Da-da-da-da.